Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Project Immersion TV. Today I'm going to be showing you the latest additions to the rig I have deployed to aid with my ongoing quest to be fully immersed in my hobby, sim racing. Things have changed quite a bit since my last recording so I wanted to give an update and a bit of a review of those changes, starting with a bit of a confession. After many years away I've got back into iRacing for the third time, there I said it. One of the reasons leading to this is the stability of VR in the sim. Another probably more universal and compelling reason is that no other title to date has a setup where I can go online and I know that there will be races in multiple classes and depending on how I'm feeling I can jump in a great selection of road cars, open wheelers and GT style track cars to name but a few. I tend to stick to road racing and I am having a real blast with the MX-5 in the Advanced Series and also with the Skippy. Anyway, IRC meets most of my needs and the force feedback isn't bad at all. The motion output is very good and as I said, the VR is stable, as stable as I could ever want. Yes it can be expensive if you want to race seriously, but iRacing isn't really what I wanted to talk to, uh, talk to you about today. I want to tell you all about this amazing rig I'm sat in, the Next Level Racing GT Track. Some of the differences to the Next Level GT Ultimate V2 and how it fares with my new-ish direct drive wheel, the recent release Podium DD2 from Fnatic. And along the way I'm probably going to mention the Oculus Rift S, which I've recently upgraded to from the CV1. Yes, I said upgraded, in my humble opinion. Your mileage may vary, caveat, caveat, caveat. So let's take a look at how I got here before diving into the details. During 2018, Fnatic Tees then announced that they were releasing a direct drive wheel series. I've been very satisfied with the Club Sport wheel version 1 and 2, but had managed to get a go on an AccuForce direct drive wheel whilst out and about, and noticed that the fidelity was just so much better. And the strength of course, but that part was not of direct interest for my immersion purposes. I looked up and down the market over the years and as some of you will know from previous episodes I no longer have the time to sim race DIY due to life getting in the way. So most of the offerings that meant building it myself were off the table right away. It's not as I couldn't, I just hadn't got the time. I'd also invested heavily in Fnatic gear over the years so I wanted something that didn't mean that I had to start again and knew that the vaporware from Fnatic around DD wheels was going to condense to liquid and eventually turn solid. Despite not being interested at all in the added forces that the direct drive wheels are capable of, and really not caring too much if it was 8 newton meters, 15, 20, 25 or even 30 plus, I did have a more major concern about the additional stresses on the next level wheel stand that I had as part of the GT Ultimate version 2 rig. I contacted Hess, the CEO and founder of Next Level Racing in Australia with my concerns. He confirmed quite quickly that the next level wheel stand would not be suitable for a direct drive wheel and told me that they were launching the GT track very soon and this was built with a much tougher construction designed specifically for serious sim racers with direct drive wheel and motion in mind and that it would also be totally compatible with their upcoming and soon to be released traction plus slider system which gives another axis lateral movement it will feature your sway, understeer, traction loss and power slide, something missing from my current V3 next level motion setup. I can't wait. I really can't wait for that. That will be a game changer. I pre-ordered the GT track so I'd be ready for when the Fnatic direct drive wheel was expected to arrive in early December. And unlike the direct drive wheel from Fnatic, the less said about this particular disappointment, the better, the GT track arrived a week or so before Christmas. Unboxing, the first thing I noticed was how well manufactured and industrial each component of the GT track felt, even before assembly. Next Level have really upped their game in this department over the years with much improvement in manufacturing standards. Every part is finished in satin black so it blends really nicely with most sim racing peripherals. It's a really good looking rig too and looks very neat, not some Frankenstein's creation. I'm not knocking the 80-20 crowd as if I had the time I would have probably gone down this route. But like a lot of you out there, for whatever reason, I just want to race in the little spare time I have nowadays, rather than spend time designing, altering, tweaking, constructing and maintaining. The GT Track ticks this box as once assembled it's rock solid and needs no further tweaking past the initial setup of getting the distances perfect to suit my body, arm and leg lengths. Until the Traction Plus system is released there are two options currently for the undercarriage. Some nice sturdy static feet or a set of eight caster wheels with locking mechanisms 
and I decided that for the time being I would use the wheels to help me move it around for the review and for changing over when the freestanding single monitor stand was released a little later on. There is an option for triples too as a separate item and both of these items have been released now. There's a stack of adjustments that can be made. The height of the wheel stand components can be raised and lowered. The angle of the wheel plate can be adjusted. And at a foot level, the angle and position of the pedal plates can both be adjusted and made even more solid with extra support bolts. The seat position forward and backward has a few options too. The majority of the frame is made from 40mm box section and the welds are full, not tacked on. Once all the bolts are tightened, there's virtually no movement, no flex, and a great feeling of rigidity throughout. This rig is built to last and withstand the forces of motion and the power of the direct drive wheels. The wheel table comes with a shed load of pre-drilled mounting holes to suit all the major named wheel bases out there and my CSW V2 bolted on right away without the need for the angle plate underneath. The wheel table is very sturdy and feels great. There's even enough room to add a couple of fans to help with HMD cooling, something I found over the period of using uh, HMDs that is an absolute necessity. The caster wheels are very robust taking my 97 kilos weight easily. I'm 181 centimeters tall and fit in the chair easily with plenty of adjustment either way for longer or shorter body and leg lengths. Just like a car seat adjustments forward and backwards and backrest tilt angle can be made on the fly as it's on rails which is handy when changing between drivers of different lengths when entertaining. The seat which is made of PU leather fits me snugly and the sporty bucket style design keeps me firmly in the seat without having to use the included four point harness, although that is optional. I find the seating position very comfortable for extended periods of time and it didn't take me too many attempts to get the wheel table just at the right height. I can get in and out of the seat very easily indeed from the right hand side. I'm a pommy so driving right hand drive configuration regardless of the car I am virtually driving. Cable management is a breeze and using the bundled velcro straps and a few meters of my own from a spool I think I've managed to make the rig look very tidy indeed. My trusty next level motion V3 bolt is straight to the frame and the seat to that. A lot easier too than attaching to the GT Ultimate V2 which to be fair has done its duty very well indeed up till now. It's just that the GT track is better all round and can accommodate the direct drive wheel forces. My book keeper also bolted on unobstructed at the back for added tactile feedback. Since first setting it up I've had the freestanding next level racing monitor stand delivered following its release and I've transferred over my TV lift to this by making a few modifications. This too is of a very sturdy industrial spec and I can put my 65 inch TV right to the top of the TV lift's extension and the stand is as strong and stable as when it's in the lower position. It's probably fair to point out that the TV lift addition is my modification and does not come with the stand but it means that I can raise the TV above the rig and watch films or play virtual golf from the comfort of the sofa behind or drop the TV to below the wheel height when using it for non-VR racing which actually is becoming very rare for me. Finally, after a short delay since pre-ordering in July, the Podium DD2 arrived at the end of April and it bolted straight on. In fact, there are five bolt holes in the bottom of the base and Fnatic recommend using with the three hole pattern synonymous with the club sport wheel bases or alternatively a four hole pattern for more strength. I opted for all five holes to be on the safe side, although it's probably a little overkill. I've mounted the kill switch on the underside of the wheel table with sticky back velcro so that I can hit it with my knee if needed as a safety feature. I've mounted the DD2's power supply unit to the front of the rig along with the mains power extension to keep them out of the way and for tidiness overall. There is a universal shifter mount included with the rig and I've mounted this to the left hand side as I mentioned earlier I'm in the UK and it feels more natural to me. Unlike the GT Ultimate rig there are no thumbscrew style knobs that you can use to undo parts of the rig and move them around. This of course makes the rig less prone to things becoming loose as all bolts have bite washers to make sure they don't come adrift in use but it does mean that once in a configuration it's not that easy or convenient to change things such as moving the shifter to the other side. It's a con and a pro. I've replaced my club sport pedal V3 with V3 inverted and whilst that First the pedal positions felt incredibly alien, I've now adjusted them so that they feel much more natural with road cars. In use the rig is truly amazing, it feels so solid. 
Even with the CSW V2, I felt more immersed because of the rigidity, but now with the DD2 in play, it's really come into its own. The combination of the GT track rig and the direct drive wheel gives me the fidelity I have been looking for. As said previously, the rig is off the shelf, ready to assemble in less than an hour, and it's no monstrosity to look at either, providing a pleasant, professional aesthetic that blends well into my man cave. I've added my 5.1 speakers to the rig for when I have company over as I tend to use the Rift desk when racing on my own and just want to explain my earlier statement when I said I had upgraded from the CV1. Oculus are claiming it's not an upgrade, moreover a modern replacement. I've been using the Oculus earbuds on the CV1 and have added earbuds to the S2 as I really want to continue to block out the outside noises to get the best immersion when racing on my own. The native audio on the S is awful, but with the earbuds it's great. The visual clarity alone compared to the CV1 is worth the money asked for the unit. It's very good indeed. In eye racing, it's a game changer, although some of the titles such as the recently released Assetto Corsa Competizione need to evolve in the VR department to look as clear as eye racing does. That said, I had a few ACC races in VR the other day and despite the Jaggies in view, I felt really immersed in the rig overall. There is very little flex in the rig, it feels very solid indeed and most of the subtle movements you see in the videos are mainly because I have the rig on the casters rather than the static feet. To be fair, I've never felt any flex in the GT Ultimate V2 until I got my hands on the GT track and now I have this experience I could not go back. It's close to perfection and I'm sure that if I had the hours to spare I could make something with zero flex out of 8020. But the design, R&D and engineering work have all been done for me. All I needed to do was unbox and assemble following the clear instructions. In conclusion, the GT track combined with a next level motion V3, a direct drive wheel and VR is giving me the most immersive experience I've ever had. Well done next level racing, I can't wait for the release of the Traction Plus. See you next time.